PK in the universe. Some people might have seen the thumbnail of this video and are like, I need to pop off in the comments section right away and tell you, PK, that you cannot compare my beloved console that's featured in this thumbnail to the Coleco Chameleon. You are wrong and you are wrong in life. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, hear me out. I'm actually not looking at the Coleco Chameleon as an entirely negative thing. And I'm gonna get to that in this video. So basically this video is to talk about the quote, new retro consoles and are they comparable to the Coleco Chameleon? And we're gonna explore that. I'm going to do a compare and contrast of these three consoles in a few specific categories. Also, since the Coleco Chameleon was originally referred to as the Retro VGS, I'm going to simply refer to this system overall as Chameleon just to save time. So here we go. The Evercade VS probably looks the least like the Chameleon. If anything, it looks like a front-loading NES, just like the one I had growing up as a kid, and I'm super nostalgic for that. However, it does share one thing with the Chameleon. It actually takes real cartridges, which is pretty freaking awesome. The Amico, I think, looks the most like the Chameleon. Like, if you flipped a Chameleon around, it would be about the same shape as the Amico. I also love that the early Chameleons had sort of a blue on black aesthetic, or maybe it was just a blue button, but anyhow, I really particularly like that bluish, tealish color, you know, that the Amico has with their black Amicos, the lighting and stuff. That's pretty freaking cool. The Atari VCS has, of course, an Atari aesthetic to it, and so does the Coleco Chameleon because they used Atari Jaguar shells. It's also interesting that both consoles have an Atari aesthetic but have very little to do with the original Atari of that era. Most likely to be a scam. Oh man, this is gonna ruffle some people's feathers already. I can already see your uh, cringing and the blood boiling. All right, let's get to it. Let me start by saying I don't think the Chameleon was a scam. I think Mike Kennedy was a dreamer who purchased a bunch of Jaguar shells and he had an idea and had no idea how to execute it. He promised a lot of things he could not deliver on. Putting a SNES Junior board in a Jaguar shell was also probably not his idea, and that was the final nail in the coffin of the Coleco Chameleon. Mike was ultimately responsible, but I don't think he was trying to steal people's money. I think he had his heart in the right place, but he was way in over his head. I totally understand why people called this thing a scam at the time. People were excited about this thing. We were rightfully disappointed because this whole thing was handled so poorly. I was such a person. I remember this time period well. I knew the writing was on the wall when they started using the Coleco name, which is a totally washed up name. I wish it had stayed in the Retro VGS and I'll get in more why I thought that later. So which console is most likely to be called a scam? By default, it has to be the Intellivision Amico. And I'm not saying that because I think it's a scam. I genuinely think it's a thing. It is a thing that will ex exist and come out. But because it's the only console on the list that hasn't come out, or at the very least made it in the hands of founders and reviewers, it would be hard to give that award to anything else. It's because of these things that it's most likely to be called a scam. At the end of the day, anything that hasn't come out is vaporware until proven otherwise. It's just how it is. The games. Which console's games are the most like what would have been on the Chameleon? This answer depends on how you look at it. One of the great things about the Chameleon was it was going to be a modern 32-bit system that could play both old and indie games on physical cartridges. I remember back in the day when Mike Kennedy said he wanted to have a game like Shovel Knight on his system in a cartridge form. That made a lot of retro gamers perk up. We wanted to believe this was possible. Evercade VS fulfills both this criteria with their Indie Heroes Collection 1, which contains the game Aguna Warriors of Virtue, a homebrew game from 2008, which was originally on a 32-bit system called the Game Boy Advance. There is also an upcoming Evercade Collection called Gremlin Collection 1, which contains a game called Hardcore 4x4, which is a game I actually personally used to own on PS1. Evercade VS is a cartridge-based home console that can play 32-bit games. The Amico and the Atari VCS definitely fill the criteria of being a system that plays indie games or games that look indie. Atari is really moving forward and hitting its stride with the Recharge series, which is also available on other platforms, which is convenient for people who already have an existing system. But from what I understand about the Atari VCS versions of these Recharge games is they have some exclusive levels. So that might incentivize the more hardcore Atari fans to pick up the Atari VCS. 
And television is really leaning in with the retro reimagined, which is the thing that I'm actually the most interested in. A game like Finnick and Fox started out as Fox and Forest, so technically they do have an indie game right there that they've reimagined. So both the Amico and the VCS have old style looking games and some indie games or independently developed games. I think the VCS has some other ones. But what neither one of them have, like the original Coleco Chameleon, is physical games. Well, technically the Amico has physical products, which is totally weird and probably in no way something retro gamers would have even been interested in like four years ago. In fact, gamers used to get angry about physical products that you needed to connect to the internet with. Also, shameless plug, come check out my Cuphead physical unboxing of the Xbox version. The controller. The Chameleon had a controller styled like the Wii U Pro controller. The controller that is the least like the Chameleon is hands down the Amico. We know what the Amico controllers look like. The Atari VCS has more of an Xbox style controller, but also has an old Atari style joystick controller. And you can hook up other kinds of controllers. The same goes for the Evercade VS with hooking up different controllers. You can hook up the portable Evercade to your system as well. So that's a another controller with a screen, kind of like the Amico in a way. I can't confirm whether a Wii U Pro controller can be hooked up to either the Evercade or the Atari, but it would be really interesting to see that. Price point. The Chameleon was originally supposed to be $300. I even made a video about this back in the day in my Coleco Chameleon trilogy. I think that was insane and everybody else did too for the most part. Evercade VS has a lot of options, so the price points are all over the place. The standard version comes with one game, Technos Arcade Collection, which has a total of eight games on one cartridge and one controller at the time of this recording to pre-order it here in the United States. It's $99.99. The premium version that you can pre-order comes with two game packs and two controllers, and that's $129.99. This is the version I pre-ordered from Best Buy. I thought about just buying it off the Funstock website over in the UK and just importing it. If I were to do that, between shipping costs and exchange rate, you would be looking at it close to $190. I'm going to be patient and wait, but I understand why people want it now. There's some other mega bundles as well on the Funstock website. There's also a Founders Edition, and there were only 5,000 of those produced. And there's some on eBay going for obscene prices. The Amico is $250, and the GameStop version is $300, and I believe it will come with six packing games. Price-wise, the Atari VCS is all over the place, too. Sometimes it pops up at Micro Center for like $250, and I've also seen it sold as high as $400. I believe some Atari Vault games are included in the Atari VCS. What's in a name? One thing that's interesting about these consoles is the names that were chosen for them. Amico sounds like Coleco, and like Coleco, Intellivision is a dormant brand that mostly existed in the form of plug and plays and compilations over the years until the announcement of the Amico. Like Coleco, Atari is a brand that has changed hands and leadership many times, and it's even changed people in charge not even that long ago, and is a company far removed from its origins. I really like the sound of the name Evercade. It sounds like a combination of Everdrive and Arcade. Those things are so relatable and identifiable to retro gamers. I love that Blaze is trying to carve out their own name and create their own legacy. They aren't just buying or borrowing the name of some dormant brand. This is what I initially liked about Retro VGS. It's like I said before, I felt like the writing was on the wall when they started using the Coleco branding. And then there's one way that all of them are awesome and not like the Chameleon, and that is the ability to make firmware updates. This was one thing I thought was the dumbest thing about the idea of the Chameleon was a lack of access to internet. All the games had to be perfect with no glitches, which was insane because even old games had glitches back in the day. I mean, people do speed runs using glitches on old games. There would never be DLC, which is actually something the Amico is said to be doing, if I'm not mistaken, and I really like that idea. Also, the Evercade obviously uses cartridges, so you don't have to worry about DLC. But again, it's so nice that you have firmware updates. Having complete self-contained games is a good idea. But if something is wrong and is found out way down the road, the power to fix that is a great thing. It's one of the best things about modern gaming. If the testers miss something, then there's hope that customers will have a fixed product. Hopefully the product isn't completely unplayable when it's released. Obviously that's the dark side of firmware updates is some companies rush things out. But I don't think that's what they're doing here, honestly. I think there's, I think they think they have things under control and find out later they don't. My conclusion. 
The truth of the matter is, these retro consoles are all the chameleon, and simultaneously, none of them are. They are their own unique things. I think the chameleon was important to the future of these consoles. Mike Kennedy showed everyone exactly what you don't want to do when starting a video game console company. But the chameleon also showed and demonstrated that there was a demand for new retro consoles, kind of like the one Mike envisioned. All these consoles bring something different to the table. Evercade VS plays classic and indie games on cartridges. The games are affordable and super collectible, and the console won't break the bank. The Amico has retro reimagined games and might actually get some families to play games together for a few minutes. The Atari VCS is a hybrid console mini PC. It has a lot to offer. It has a lot of versatility and serves both functions. And of course, you can play both Atari games and new recharge series of games. So the Atari VCS is a, something I've actually tried out. My friend Super Nintendo uh, let me try out his. And I liked what I saw. If I didn't already have an 800 some dollar PC, I might actually want to get that, but I obviously do, so it doesn't really do much for me. The Evercade VS, it's a console I have pre-ordered. And like I said, I'm just biding my time and waiting patiently. I've actually bought a few games. The Intellivision Amico is not something I've tried out. And the reason I haven't tried it out is because it's not been anywhere where I could possibly ever even go to try it. It's either been on the West Coast or the East Coast for the most part in Utah or somewhere, I think. It has never been to the Chicago area, so I obviously can't play it. You know, people say, if you just played it, it's like, how do I just play it? It's not like it's in every Best Buy kiosk or something. So, I mean, I only know what I've seen and what I've seen other people say about it, and it is what it is. So, but anyways, what are your guys' thoughts? Which console is the most like the Chameleon in a positive way? Which console is the most like the Chameleon in a negative way? Comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much and stay awesome in this universe. Thanks. Bye.